Shalom, Shalom. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening to every one of you who are watching us. This is Gospel Impact International Center, Mombasa. And we are privileged to come to you to bring our wishes, our Christmas wishes to you and to share with you the Word of God in this festive season of 2022. Today we want to share with us what the scripture says about the season of Christmas. We know that everybody's excited. People are going up country to visit. People are traveling for holiday and people are set to enjoy their Christmas season. And as you do all that, we want to share with you the word of God and get perspective of what the Lord is saying concerning this season. Jesus Christ is the reason for this season. So we want to discuss what the Bible says. We know we have the stories that we have learned in Sunday school, uh, the nativity story, the wise men coming from the east, and, and, and all that goes with the story of Christmas, the young baby in the manger, and people going to see the young baby, and all this that we, we love to hear during the Christmas season. Now today, I want to share with us, as the Lord will help us, what is in all that story? Is it just a story for every Christmas season? Or what is this that the Lord would want us to understand? And before we begin, I want us just to make a prayer so we can begin together. Father, in Jesus' name, we are grateful for this season that we have entered into the season of the birth of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, as we share your word, we pray for understanding. We pray that your word will come forth with light, that as we hear it, we will see what your heart is in concerning this season. Thank you, Father. Give us understanding. Give me utterance as I share your word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I'm privileged today to have my pastors and ministers with me, uh, Pastor Carlo with me, uh, my associate pastor, and Minister Sharon with me here. And we are happy to come to you to share the word of God. Now, I want to share on the mystery of Christmas. The mystery of Christmas. Now, if you look at what prophet Isaiah spoke about the birth of Jesus Christ and you look at what happened years later when he was actually born into this world, you will be amazed at what God was telling us as humanity. Now, before I get to that scripture in the book of Isaiah chapter 9, which tells us vividly of what was to come years before the prophecy that came to speak about the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I want to tell you about the language of the Bible. The Bible has a language. If you don't understand the language of the Bible or the scripture, you may miss out on some truths that are in the Bible. Now, Isaiah 28 and verse 9 and 10 tells us of how God teaches us, how we learn from the Bible, how we learn the word of God. Isaiah 28, verse 9 and 10, the scripture says, Whom shall I teach knowledge? And whom shall I make to understand doctrine? Those that are weaned from the milk, and they are drawn from the breasts. Those that are weaned from milk, milk is for children. But the Bible says those that will learn knowledge those that will learn doctrine are those that have been weaned from milk. They are maturing from being children into being mature sons. So the Bible is giving us very clearly here, only those that will understand, will appreciate the knowledge of the word of God, understand the doctrine of scripture, are those that will graduate from being babies and taking only the milk of the word, but they mature taking the bones the bonds of the word, you know, being able to understand the deep things of the scripture. Now, verse 10 says, how we, learn, how we learn the word of God, it is line upon line, precept upon precept, a little here, a little there, and the picture becomes clear. So the Bible itself is a commentary 
of its own. It, it speaks about what it's speaking about. It explains it. It, it corroborates it. It, uh, it proves it. The Bible is complete in itself. And God explains what he wants to say in the very word without adding anything outside. So all the teachings that we have in the Bible begin from a natural perspective and then they project the spiritual. So it begins from the natural, then it projects the spiritual. Now, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 44, 44 there, the Bible says that you begin from the natural, then you go to the spiritual. There is a spiritual body, there is a natural body. There is what is sown in the body, what is sown in the natural, it is raised in the spiritual. That's how the scripture goes. Natural body, spiritual body. It is sown in the natural, it raises up in the spiritual. And you look at the scripture that comes right there after, talks about the first Adam and the second Adam, the natural and the spiritual. Adam, the first man, was the first man and Jesus Christ is referred to as the second Adam. So the first Adam is the natural. The Bible says he was of the earth. He was an earthly man. He was a man of the flesh. And the Bible says that he was made a living soul. But the second Adam, the spiritual man, was a man of heaven, a man from heaven, a man of the spirit, a man that was made a quickening spirit the bible says glory to god that the natural adam was 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 made a living soul but the spiritual adam the second adam the bible says he was made was made a quickening spirit hallelujah so the second adam as we learn in the scripture is the lord jesus christ i'm trying to get you to understand what i was saying the natural begins the spiritual then follows when you understand the natural you can understand the spiritual. So the first Adam and the second Adam, Jesus Christ. Glory to God. So having said that and learning about Christmas, then we'll go to our scripture in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. And I want to ask Pastor Kalu to read for us Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. Amazing scripture there. So we can be able to see what Christmas is being described here in the Bible. Isaiah chapter 9, I will read from verse 6. And the Bible says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and the peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon, the, upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice for henceforth even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. Glory to God. Now that scripture is, is amazing. It is loaded. I want you to uh, just follow me very keenly as I try to go through this scripture. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. Amazing Christmas. Illustration of what is happening uh, uh, around the Christmas story, around the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now listen. The Bible says, Unto us a child is born. A child is born. That is the natural. Children are born by women. Children are born into the world. So the Bible is saying, unto us and to the world, a child has been born. The natural has been given to us. Now look at the second scripture, says what? And unto us, a son has been given. So this child that is born, natural, now a son, he's being referred to as a son, not a son born, but a son given. A son has been given. Glory to God. Now, that gives you a clear picture there as, as referring to the natural and the spiritual. The child was born by a virgin, the miraculous virgin birth of Jesus Christ, by Blessed Mary. 
And now the Bible says, apart from being a child that is born, this one is a son that was given. And that takes you to John chapter 3 and verse 16. That for God so loved the world that he gave, he gave his only begotten son. So this one that was a, a child was actually given of God and he came and entered into the world as a child. But he was a son from the beginning. He was there from the beginning. God gave him and God by his miraculous, uh, a, a miraculous power put that son in a woman's uh, womb and she, she was able to bring forth a child. Now that is what I wanted you to see, the natural and the spiritual. So a son is given to us and the Bible says the government shall be upon his shoulder. He's coming as a son, but he's coming as a ruler of governments. He's coming to establish a government of the kingdom of God. And the government, the authority, shall be upon his shoulders. Now look at what follows thereafter. It says that his name, the name of this child, according to us, the name of this son that God has given, look at what the Bible is saying. Amazing. That his name shall be one wonderful hallelujah he is going to be wonderful meaning what not just in appearance but it's going to be full of wonder wonderful hallelujah so the son will be wonderful and indeed he was full of wonder the bible says wherever he went he did good he healed the sick, he healed the blind, he raised the dead, he dead. He was full of wonder. So Isaiah prophesied about the great wonders that this son was coming to do. And his name is wonderful. That is good enough. Number two, he is the counselor. Amazing there. Counselor, the son is being given a name as a counselor. If you know your scripture, you know who is described as the counselor. And that is the, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our counselor. So the son is being given the same name as the spirit. That is the counselor. The son is a counselor. The son is full of wonder. And look at the next one. Amazing there. That the son will be who? The mighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. The Son will be the mighty God. Great scripture. Mind-boggling scripture. That the Son that was given now is being referred to as the mighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now that can confuse you a little bit because how can the Son be the mighty God? And now look at the next one. It will amaze you even more. It says what? He is the everlasting wow. Father. Hallelujah. The Son is the mighty God. The Son is the everlasting Father. How is that? That is amazing. But that is a spiritual that you need to really think about as you read scripture. And I pray as we finish this, you'll be able to see it. The Son that is born during this festive season, that was born the many years ago, that more than 2,000 years ago, that son that was given is the everlasting father. <laughs> and he is also the mighty God. And finally there they say the son is also what? The prince of peace. The son is the prince of peace. Now I want to take you a little, I want to give you a fast forward there and then I'll come back. Look at all those descriptions of the son what it is what is attributing to the son one is the counselor which is an attribute of the holy spirit two is the mighty god the attribute of god the father and now again he's the prince of peace hallelujah Amen. glory to god now the prince of peace i want to take you right into the book of genesis where abraham met with melchizedek and the Bible says Melchizedek was the prince of Salem. Abraham met the prince of Salem. Salem is peace. So Abraham met the prince of peace. Glory to God. The prince of peace, Jesus Christ, met with Abraham many, many years ago. 
and, and, and I want you to see that Jesus Christ, when he was born into the world during the time of, of Christmas, not necessarily this month, as all the arguments are out there, is it 25th? Is it, is it which month, which date? That is not really the issue. The issue is a son was given, a son was given to us, a child was born and we received him. That is what matters. The dates, they are neither here nor there, but a son was given to us. Now the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, is also an attribute or a name that was given to him in Isaiah before, before he was born. Now, it is amazing. What am I trying to say? Look at it critically. The son, the prophecy that came many years before he was born, was now giving us the name of that son. How is he going to be? Giving us the full attribute of the Trinity of God. The Trinity is saying in those names that the son was given. The counselor, the Holy Spirit, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the Son, Jesus, is a Prince of Peace. So you can see the whole Trinity right there in the description of the name that was given to the Son by prophecy in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah. Now that I'm going to sum it up with a scripture in the book of 1 Timothy verse three, at chapter 3 and verse 16. Another amazing scripture. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. And the Bible says, Without controversy, Great is the mystery of godliness. Great is the mystery. Something you cannot quite understand is a mystery. It's not been made clear to you. When it becomes clear, it ceases to be a mystery. But when you have not understood it, it is a mystery. Now, in the book of Timothy, it says, Great is the mystery of godliness. One, God was manifest in the flesh. God was manifested in the flesh justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and then he was received up into heaven. That was almost like a 360. You know, he came down, and then he walked the earth, and then he was received into the heavens. Now, this is it. The son was given. God in Christ came. And the Bible says that he may reconcile the world back to himself. That is the essence of Christmas. God came in his son that he may reconcile the world back to himself. That is the mystery. That is what we celebrate over Christmas. Yes, we love the stories. We love all the stories that are around the nativity and, and all that beautiful stories. But this is it. God came in Christ that he may reconcile the world back to himself. So the son, that son in a manger, was the mighty God. The son in the manger was the prince of peace. The son in the manger was the counselor, full of wonder, wonderful glory to God. Hallelujah. So at the birth of Jesus, when he came down on earth, there was a beautiful moment in the history of the earth because divinity now visited humanity. Hallelujah. Divinity visited humanity. And we were able to receive of God his son who he gave. Hallelujah. So as you celebrate Christmas, don't miss out on the essence of Christmas. That this is that moment in the time of history that was never like before. That heaven visited earth divinity was able to invade humanity. Christ came. God came in Christ Jesus, reconciling the world back to himself. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So unto us a child is born. A child has been born. We celebrate in Christmas. But unto us a son was given. God gave his son. And this son is the wonderful, wonderful son that was full of wonder and he's still doing wonders even now. Hallelujah. This son is a counselor, mighty counselor, and he's still counseling. He can counsel us. We listen to his wise counsel and we are able to know what the will of the father is. This son is our everlasting father. Don't be confused. That is the Trinity as it is. Many people don't understand it. Many people doubt whether the Trinity is there. It is there. It is there in scripture may not be there as Trinity as you want to see it, but it is there in the scripture. If you read it very keenly, you'll see it there. The Son, the Father, and the Spirit are one, 
our God is one and it's, it comes out through the scripture. So I want to just uh, encourage you this Christmas season that the son was given for you. The son was given so that God through the son can reconcile you back to himself. So I want to encourage anyone that is listening to this message. If you have not received the son, God gave his son that you may receive him. He is wonderful. He's full of wonder. He'll, he'll do wonders in your life. Glory to God. He is a mighty counselor. He will bring in wisdom into your life. Hallelujah. He's the prince of peace. He'll bring peace in your situation, peace in your life. If you receive the Prince of Peace, hallelujah. And he's the everlasting father. Meaning what? Forever he will be our father. There will be no end to his fatherhood to us. He will be our father forever and ever. Eternal father. And we are grateful to know that we have a father who will always be our father. He will never abandon his responsibility as a father. He is our eternal father. Glory to God. So this Christmas, I want you to look at it in a different perspective. Christmas brings peace to you. Christmas brings salvation to you. Christmas brings wonders to you because he is wonderful. Hallelujah. So if you have enjoyed the word, if the word of God has touched you, I want you to respond to it. Don't just go out for holiday. Don't just go out for trips. Don't just go out for those dramas, beautiful dramas of the nativity. There is what the Bible is saying to you. The word of God is saying to you that there is peace in him who is the prince of peace that was born for you. He will do wonders. He will do wonders in your life. Glory to God. So I want to pray with you as we finish the, the session today. And I believe that this Christmas will be like no other if you receive the word of God. Glory to God. So I want us to pray wherever you are. If you're watching, I want us to pray with you. If you are agreeing with the scripture, if you want the Lord to touch you and Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, to come into your life, you can receive him. You can open your heart. And he will come into your heart. Bible says that he will dine with you. He will open up the treasure that he has for you because he's full of wonder. Glory to God. So I want us to pray. If you can pray with me as I, as I finish this session. If you can repeat after me, if you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can repeat this a prayer. And the Lord Jesus, this Christmas, will come into your home, will come into your life. You can repeat after me, Lord Jesus. I come before you. I have heard your word that you are my Prince of Peace, that you are my Father. I come before you and I receive you into my life. I declare that you are my Lord. I declare that you are the Son of God. I declare that you died and came for my salvation. And I receive you this time. Come into my life. Save me. Draw me to yourself even more. From now and forevermore. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my life. In Jesus' name. And I want to pray for you if you have said this prayer in your home, in your car as you're driving, or in the plane as you're traveling, wherever you're going. I want to pray over you that what you have uh, decided to do to, to receive Christ is one of the best decisions you've made in your life. And I want to pray for you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the people that have heard your word and have received the gift of salvation that you gave by giving Jesus Christ to us. I pray for them, Lord, that you will help them, keep them mighty God, that they will see you at the end of the age when you shall come to receive us home. Bless them, Lord. Keep them strong. Lord, I pray that they'll, be, they'll find a place to be able to be taught of your word. They'll find a place to be able to be encouraged. They'll be connected to a church that will teach the right doctrine. Wherever their habitation is, Father, I pray for them that you will link them with people who have sound doctrine, that they will learn of your word. Bless them, mighty God. Help them to transition from the life they have been living to a life that is godly, a life that exhibits your glory in, in, in their season. Thank you, mighty God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. We love you. We'll keep on coming to you. Check us out, and we will be sharing the word of God. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous 2023. Amen.